Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a tour of this room. It's not going to be scripted eh, except for a few notes I have written down. Uh, it's going to be very casual. There's three main sides to this game room and I'm going to take you to each of the sides one by one and just tell you everything that's going on. You may have seen this room many times on YouTube or maybe it's your first time. People like to see these kind of tours and that's why I post them. I do these kind of tours about every two years. This time I am using 24 frames per second for filming so I'm going to look a little blurry when I do things like this when I'm at 24 frames per second it allows the camera to have a wider view which is uh, good for a tour like this so if I look blurry that's why just to give you a summary of what's going on in here there are about 60 game systems hooked up to two different TVs the main focus of this room is to allow me to play any of these systems on a moment's notice without having to get them out of the closet or whatever. They're all hooked up and uh, getting 60 plus systems crammed into two different walls and ready to play is quite a challenge. It took me a long time to figure out. Needless to say, there's a lot of wires. There's over 300 cords in all, 126 controllers, 63 power cords, all kinds of weird stats. But the main focus, like I said, is to make them ready to play. I also try to make them presentable, which is why I have them all facing forward with the controllers facing forward and so forth. This room continues to evolve over time. I have three more systems waiting in the wings that I'm going to be adding to this setup. I don't play every system in this room. There's a lot of ones I go to again and again, obviously. So there is a museum aspect to this room. It's more like a personal museum for me. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and go over to one side of the setup where the CRT is. So on this side, I have a CRT TV surrounded by about half the systems in this room, which is about 30 of them. They are all hooked up to the TV. I just have to push some buttons to get them to display on the screen. Now this screen might look a little blurry to you because I am filming at 24 frames per second. So never mind the image, it looks better uh, to me than it does to you. So there are switch boxes on top of the TV, which are routed to the various systems along this wall. One thing you'll notice about the configuration is that I have systems on every side of the TV. This is a numbers game. How do you get 30 systems hooked up to one TV? Well, one way to do it is to surround a TV on every side. So it was very important to get shelves that are configurable. That's what I've done here. I have a bridge across the top. The TV itself is sitting on top of a CRT TV stand. Um, that's about as old as the TV itself. And that has its own little shelves down below. Uh, the TV is very heavy. I wouldn't want to put it directly onto these wire shelves. I may do that anyway. Uh, I'll have to check the weight limit. About half these systems are hooked up via S-Video to this TV. Another half are hooked up via composite. Most of the ones over here are composite and most of the ones over here are S-Video. They're kind of grouped. There's a few composite ones that are on the other wall that still reach over here simply because I ran out of room over here. Okay, so I brought you a little bit closer and I wanted to show you how I organize some of the cords. The controller cords are for the most part tucked into little trays and whenever I want to play a game, I just untuck the cords like that. I, like I said, I want everything to be ready to play. I don't want to have to store the cords somewhere else. I want them right here, so I have various ways of tucking in cords throughout this room. These black trays are one of three ways that I use. There's also two other types of trays I use in this room and uh, those allow you to tuck the controller cords in too. In the case of this Dreamcast and the Jaguar that's right next to it, um, when you're playing the cords can be in front of the screen so I have these little hooks off to the side that I can just hook it in like that and that keeps it out of the way. The Dreamcast is my most top played system right now, so uh, I'm accustomed to doing this. This cord also has an extension on it. Uh, there's a lot of extensions to the cords in this room. They allow me to play from the center of the room, basically. So when I'm done with it, I put it away and like this.
it takes a minute, so. And then I just put the controller back like that. What you also see here are some of the switch boxes I use. One set of these is for the things that are hooked up via S-Video. The other is for the composite systems. I have a numbering system I use throughout the room. And you'll see on these switch boxes, I have number ranges, basically. Whenever I want to play a particular system, I just get the number from it. And I use that to coordinate the switch boxes. Now, since I have so many systems, I have two layers of switch boxes. So for a lot of these systems, I have to press one button in one spot of the setup and then come over here and press a button. These are mechanical switch boxes. They don't take any like um, power to them in order to make this happen. Also on top of these two switch boxes, you'll see video one and video two. And what that means is that I have to uh, set the TV to that input source because all my composites go to video one or I'm sorry, all my S video goes to video one and all my composite go to video two. I'll show you what I mean here. That's channel three, which I will talk about in a second here. And here's video one. Okay, so let's say I wanna play the Super Nintendo. I get my game and insert it. I look and it says system four. So there's a switch box over here. It's already on four, so I'm just gonna leave that as is. But the other switch box, I'm going to hit the one that says one through four. I also have to make sure number four gets power. So at the top of the setup, I have numbered power switches and I have a number four here. So I'm gonna turn that on. It's lit up, but you can barely see it with all these bright lights. Then I'm going to turn the system on and there it is. Contra is coming. Then I could stretch the controller out and sit down in the center of the room and, and play it. These power things at the top are called rack mount power supplies. They are normally used by DJs who, I don't know, run their turntables with it and stuff like that. Behind this are a bunch of power bricks to all these different systems and they're kind of out of view here and that's part of the idea. Since they can get warm sitting on top of these wire shelves, it can kind of dissipate some of that heat. The main idea of having an individual switch for each system is so that I'm only using power for the system I'm using. As you may already know, even if you're not using a system, if it's plugged into the wall, the plug sometimes gets warm. It's consuming power. When you're talking about 60 systems, that's going to be a lot of power being leaked. So this thing allows me to control the power. Now something like the Genesis here that has a Sega CD unit has two power cords to it. And for that, I have two switches for it, 6A and 6B. There's a few other systems in the room that do that same thing. Now over here, things are a little bit more messier. I have some switch boxes here that function the same way as the S-Video ones over there. But I also have some recording equipment that allows me to record video from some of these systems. This thing here is a splitter that allows me to take composite and to split it into two different signals. So one can be sent to the TV and one can be sent to the laptop in order for me to record it um, using a Dazzle device. <clears throat> I have one of those Dazzle devices right here. Um, nowadays, though, I do have other ways of recording things, such as via HDMI using my Retron 5 system. But for now, this stuff's going to stay here, and it does add some wire mess to the mix here. I do want to show you how I tied up the wiring in the back here. Like I said, there's a lot of wires in this room, so I like to control it as much as I can, but I can't make it perfect. A lot of people would say, why don't you hide these wires? Truthfully, I need access to these because I'm adding new systems all the time. And I'm also performing repairs on these systems. So I need to reach back here and take the Velcro tie off and remove systems from time to time to work on them. But anyway, I try to tidy it up with uh, Vel Velcro ties and twister seals. You're gonna see a blanket over the door here, but never mind that. I'm just trying to dampen the echo. One thing I wanna point out though, is that I have LED lights all over this setup on along every single shelf. It was a feature that I thought would be pretty cool to look at, 
But truthfully, I have so many of them, it's really hard to have them on while I'm playing a game. It's just, it blinds me. And if you're sitting in here for a while with them on and you leave the room, you could still see them. They're like burned into your eyeballs. So I may take them down one day, not sure. But let me go ahead and light up this side of the setup for you. I have a set of switches for them on this black rack mount power supply up here. And I just turn them all, all on. So right now they're kind of hard to see because I have all these lights on uh, shining on my setup. But I have these little remotes that allow me to change the colors. I use two different ones because there's two different types of LEDs in here and one takes one type of remote and one takes the other. But uh, let me change them all to blue. And what I have to do is walk around hitting the little blue button on the remote. There we go. There's these little boxes embedded in my setup and I have to make sure the IR signal gets to the little boxes in order to change the colors. So now let me turn off the lights and show you how it looks. Okay, so it doesn't look too bad, does it? Truthfully though, there's so many LEDs in this room. If I turn them all on, the circuit breaker to the room normally goes off, especially if I'm running a high power game system like the PS5. So I have to be careful about that. That's why I'm only lighting up half my setup here. But let me change some of the colors and see what you think. So let's try red. There we go. So yeah, that burns my eyes out, uh, but it looks cool for a limited time. As you can see, there's a lot of different effects I can do with these, but a lot of them aren't very useful for a game room. Um, except maybe a, on Christmas Eve or something, if I'm, if I'm doing a Christmas special. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn these things back off before I go crazy. Moments ago I misspoke when I said half of these systems on this wall are S-Video and half are composite. I actually have many systems hooked up via RF as well, including the Atari 7800 here and the Odyssey 2. The 2600 here has been modded to output composite. In the past, I had the RF systems hooked up via switch boxes, but I have found it brings in a lot of interference when you do it that way. So I came up with my own little system. So whenever I want to play a, an RF system in this room, like the Atari 7800 here, I look at the number that's on the system, and then I grab this big group of wires here, and I find the number that, that corresponds to the system. So right now I'm looking for 48. And it's here somewhere. There it is. There's wire number 48. This is carrying the RF signal. I then plug that into a little interface I have here. Um, I'll unplug whatever I had there to begin with. This is a uh, wire that leads to the TV. It says TV. So I plugged in 48 right there. And then I would turn the system on and it would allow me to play the system. There's some systems in this room, like the Studio 2, that in order to play them, I have to bring them out onto the floor because uh, for this one, the controllers are built into the system. So for those, I do have enough slack in the cords to play them from the center of the room. Not that I play these kind of systems too often, but uh, the option is still there. There's a few other systems like this one in the room uh, where I have to bring it out onto the floor. Okay, so I want to show you some of the more um, ugly parts of the setup. Ugh, my cat wants to get in the shot here. This is Buddy. He is a one-eyed cat. Uh, we found him uh, as a kitten with one eye. And uh, he wants to be in the video, so here we go. Prepare to see a lot of white fur floating around. As I was saying though, it's really messy back there simply because I have so many systems and a lot of them have those huge power bricks. And some of the lower systems, I have to put the power bricks at the bottom. Luckily though, this is mainly out of sight and normally I don't have this much light. It's not something that is visible to someone that's sitting in a chair in the middle of the room. One last thing I wanna point out on this side of the room is that I have two systems that are VCR based. So those are not as accessible as the other things in this room. I have to turn on the VCR and I have to configure the switch boxes a certain way. Uh, but truthfully, I don't play these two systems that often. You can see the VCR up there and the games actually go into the VCR and then they're playable on the screen. 
Okay, I feel like I'm giving the weather forecast or something here. Um, this is the other wall and I have a uh, 4K TV here. I can't remember how many inches it is. Most of the systems that surround it are HDMI. I have about four that use component. I think it's five actually. So basically all my modern systems are over here, including the PS4 and Xbox Series X and stuff like that. Over here I have a Retron 77 and a Retron 5, which lets me play games that I could play on the other systems, but uh, I use these for recording purposes for my videos. Over here is where the mini systems are at. On this side, I have some of the RF systems, uh, four of them, which would be played on that TV over there. And I have a couple of composite systems as well, the Master System and the Neo Geo, and those would be played on the other TV. All the others get played on this TV. I'm going to go ahead and do the LED thing for this side as well. And hopefully the circuit breaker doesn't go off because I have the PS5 running there and that consumes a lot of power. So let's see if all these things come on today. Sometimes there's a strand that doesn't come on. Looks okay, so let me turn them all green. So there it is, I made them all green and it actually doesn't look that bad, does it? Under the TV here, I kind of have a messy area. This is where all the different HDMI cords from all these systems converge. And I have three switch boxes and you'll see they're labeled HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI 3. Those correspond to the three HDMI inputs on the back of the TV. If I'm using a system that's on this box, I have to switch the TV to HDMI 2. Each of these boxes can take in five inputs. So right now I'm only able to have 15 connected to the TV at any one time. Unfortunately, I have more than 15 systems now that take HDMI. So you'll see a lot of these HDMI cords unplugged. They're just sitting here. If I wanna play one of these systems, I then have to plug it into the box. This says R5, which means it goes to the Retron 5. This is all going to get replaced because I have a gigantic HDMI switcher on the way that holds 16 inputs. I might have to keep one or two of these here, but um, that's going to make it so I don't have to do any swapping. Um, I thought three was going to be enough, but in the long run, um, I ended up buying a lot of HDMI systems, so I just need more uh, stuff. So in the future, I'm going to do a video of me upgrading this spot to the new switcher. Also tucked further, I have some recording devices, including this one, which I use a lot, which is the HD606. It's an Elgato capture device. Um, I use that to record various gameplay. Basically, when I want to record an HDMI system, I t disconnect it from wherever it's at, and I put it in the input on this device. This goes to the laptop, that's a USB, and this goes to Switchbox 3 right here. I also have a composite area here. So right here we have 62, which is the GameCube, and I actually have GameCube on the back of it. If I wanted to play GameCube on this TV, I could uh, plug these into this little interface here, and I just unplug what I ha have here. So I plug this in, and I turn on the GameCube power, and then um, I switch the TV to composite mode, and then I'm able to play GameCube that way. I also have Wii, Xbox, the new one, and one other, I can't remember which one it is. This might get replaced one day too. I do have an adapter that lets me convert composite to HDMI, but it's not perfect. I'm gonna hold off for a more expensive one in the future. Okay, so I mentioned earlier how I have these black trays uh, that have the controller's cords tucked into them, but I've also made some other kind of trays and this blue one is something new to the room. I just made this a few weeks ago and it gives me more room to work with. The black trays, I can only put one system per tray, but this new kind of tray, I can put three systems at least. Uh, so I have the Ouya here in the middle. It has a tucking area just like the black trays. I've been experimenting with these and I plan on making more of them. The reason I made it baby blue is so that the systems themselves would stand out. 
Uh, most systems are black and black up against the blue makes, makes them stand out. Here's a better look at them. Here's some other blue trays I have and as I add new systems, I have space here to put them in between the ones that are already here. I purposely make this a scalable setup because I always anticipate on future systems being released. So this is the section that has the mini systems. And for those, I have a specially designed tray that's a little bit different dimension wise than the other blue trays. On these, I have a bar that sits behind the controllers here, uh, but I can still tuck in the cords. And there's a little gap in the back where the cords from the back of the minis uh, can be tucked in as well. Okay, so here's the third wall of the room. Over here, I have a bunch of handhelds that are on some shelves. It's a modest collection. And underneath that, I have some Vetrex games and Virtual Boy games. That's mostly the whole library of those two devices. I think I'm missing like one or two Vetrex games and maybe one or two Virtual Boy games. In the middle here, I have the Vetrex and the Virtual Boy. And what I can do is bring the chair up to this desk and play these directly. And over here, I have a wall of Vetrex overlays. Those are the things you put over top of the Vetrex to give it color when you wanna play that system. Okay, so basically if I wanna play the Virtual Boy, I just grab a game over here and I pop it in and then I turn it on and I go like this. And another thing I want to point out is that there's actually a window on this side of the room. There's also a window on the other side of the room and I have it plugged up with cardboard and that keeps the sunlight from getting in here and damaging the games. And this is an upstairs bedroom. You can't really see the cardboard from the outside. Trust me, I've gone out there and looked. I didn't want the house to be tacky looking but this just looks like a curtain from the outside. So over here are the Vetrex overlays. If I wanna play a Vetrex game, I have to remove these from the wall. They are held on by little magnets, like that. So here's the fourth wall, and it's not utilized as much as the other walls, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. You, this giant curtain looking thing is actually a comforter that I used to dampen the sound. Um, we were gonna throw that comforter away, but I thought, hey, why don't I just nail it up to the wall? This is a closet and I've taken the doors off the closet. In the future, I may uh, put a table in here and put my PC in here so that when I'm editing the videos, I can be close to all this other stuff. I can also play PC games, but I normally don't play PC games because I got all these other systems in the room. But anyway, I film a lot in here and I store the lights and store other things in here. My camera does not have a flip out screen uh, that reverses. So I can't see when I'm in the shots sometimes. So I, ha so I use a mirror that I have here to mirror the back of the camera so I can see if I'm in the shot. Right here, I've hung some games on the wall. I have some DS games and PS4 games and Switch games. I'm just kind of testing that out. So yeah, there's not much going on over here, but in the future, if I ever expand the setup, I might snake it onto this wall, but we'll see. This barrier right here kind of is in the way. So I might also just put shelving back here to store controllers and stuff like that. You might ask, where are all your games? I actually have about 2,200 video games and they're in another room on some shelves and I didn't want to cover that much in this video. I also collect video game magazines, at least Electronic Gaming Monthly, and I have those taking up a whole closet. Other than that, I really want to keep everything contained in this one video game room so that it doesn't take over the house. That happens to many collectors. Which brings me to another thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Should you create a room like this? I would say with today's prices on games and systems and the amount of work it takes to maintain a room like this, I would advise not 
to be a collector and to not create a, vi uh, get a room like this. I would instead advise you to get a mister or some other kind of device and just use that as your main system. If you don't know about mister, just do some research on it and you'll see what I mean. This room is something that I would enjoy more than anyone else. This is the kind of thing I'm into, but if I had to do it from scratch again today, I wouldn't do it the same way. That being said, I do enjoy this room a lot and I want to show you how I actually utilize it from the middle of the room. Okay, so I have a gaming chair in the middle of the room and whenever I'm playing things over here, I just go like that. If I play things over there, I face it this way. There's two ottomans in here and I have them covered with a green towel because uh, the cats have scratched up the tops of the ottomans. They're, they weren't that high quality. I have some storage space underneath the lids of these. And when I'm playing a game, I'm usually like this, and I'm just sitting here relaxing. A lot of people say these chairs aren't comfortable, but I've played hours in them. In the past, I have had cushy recliners in here, but they took up a lot of room. And they were also hard to scoot back and forth when I want to film. Throughout today, I've been moving this stuff aside so I can move the lights in the place in the camera. That's everything I want to cover today. If you want to see another video about this room, you can watch my video on how I made those blue trays for the shelves. Subscribe to the channel if you like these kind of videos. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody.